It's barely 24 hours after the unveiling of the logo of a new security outfit codenamed Operation Shege Kapasa by a coalition of northern groups, and the initiative is already under fire. For instance, the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Saad Abubakar, is blaming the northern elites for allowing some youths to float the initiative. Also, the umbrella body of Ariwa Youth Groups, uh, the Joint Action Committee of the Northern Youth Associations, has distanced itself from the proposed security outfit. I still have my guest with me in the studio. We have Christian Wugu, thank you very much. Pleasure. And of course, we have Ada Njamanzi. A pleasure to have you still uh, you. in the studio. Now, the Sultan of Sokoto is also an elder of the North, and uh, he is coming out to blame the North um, for the action. Isn't he indicting himself? Let's start from there. Well, I wouldn't look at it that way. Um, there is a challenge. The security is a challenge, and some people, uh, and that's, again, a matter of process. Some persons, young people, uh, and then, of course, responding to, to the unemployment in the land are coming together to uh, put together a security outfit and um, posing it to be representing a region. And the Sultan says, no, um, there are better ways of doing such things. I'm not, th I'm, I'm not thinking he's indicting himself. Um, but he's saying, he's saying the elders allowed the situation to get to this point, to have young people dictate what should be. And I am saying, you are an elder of the northern um, part of this country, and of Nigeria, actually. But of course, let's focus on the north. Shouldn't he be in the know of such a move? Yeah, essentially, he's an elder, but again, he can't walk alone. Um, the reality is that there are security challenges, especially in the north. Thinking about it, I'm even beginning to see that the north is actually destroying itself, the way Dogara put it, um, the former Speaker of the House. Um, so it's, I wouldn't just look at that straight indictment. He is coming out to say uh, either the elders have failed or they didn't uh, guide the youths properly, but essentially all of that shouldn't deviate from the fact that the youths are responding to a major security challenge okay. in the whole country and particularly in the north. Okay, I, I'm still going to stay with the Sultan's uh, comments, but this time I'll come to you. He said that if the elders don't take the lead, the youths will do whatever they like and think that it is right. He also said they have to caution the youths by giving them good leadership. He also said they shouldn't allow the youths to take over leadership from them. Isn't that contradictory to some point because one would say on the one hand he is afraid that the youths are going to come and take over uh, power or leadership or stuff and then on the other hand he is saying that they should be properly guided so there are two like you said it's contradicting each other um, I understand that uh, sentiment there's a lot of insecurity in the country generally but in the north it's a different story and I think what he what the Sultan is trying to do is also call out to his fellow elders or the el fellow northern elites. You know, if we have to work towards the insecurity in the north, we need to come together. So this is not the route to go because now we're here, we're, at, we're in power, but the youth, are take, the youth are now taking over. They're trying to take the power into their own hands. And now that particular statement of um, this, the, the youth need better leadership or they shouldn't take, I'm, now I'm worried because what are you trying to say? Still on the question of leadership, uh, the Arewa youth groups um, have come up to distance themselves from the launch. That was what we said uh, during the intro. According to them, uh, the outfit is the brainchild of um, Norton elders. Um, now, on the one hand, we have the Sultan saying that the elders have failed that they are not guiding the youths properly. And then on the other hand, the youths are saying it is the brainchild of the elders. Who should we believe? Essentially, you know that this new outfit, um, you can call the name now. Shege <laughs> Kapasa. <laughs> okay, it's actually trying to respond. It's responding to the Omoteku of the Southwest. I want to believe. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, yeah. But the difference here is that Omoteku had the buy-in 
of both the leaders, the youths, everybody bought into it. And in this other case, my understanding is that somebody is saying, you didn't carry me along. The elders by the Sultan is saying, we, this is out of our control, it's out of our space, we are not in charge of it. Now the youths are saying, we, we are not part of it. Uh, so it, I think that proper groundwork hadn't been done. Even yeah, that, you're quite correct. Because what happened, what, this conversation is coming up because there was an unveiling of the logo and maybe some vehicle and some persons in uniform. Mm -hmm. But they're saying that they have not formalized the process yet. The Norton governors have not bought That's in true. to the movement. They are sort of preempting um, the Norton governors to buy into the scheme. We don't know a lot about this group. So one would wonder, what powers do they have to actually come up with this initiative, is it okay? Do they, let me start on, from the position of the law. Does a group, a, a, a group that say they're a coalition of different social um, social groups, come together and say they want to create a security outfit? Yeah, you see, basically my perspective. Somebody may just immediately say it's out of the law, but you need to recognize that also the law grows and responds to the reali realities within the society. And that what wasn't law yesterday can become, become law, law today or maybe tomorrow. Or what um, was law, the same thing yesterday uh, can also stop being law today or tomorrow. So here we have a situation where we, the people want to take their safety and their security in their hands because from what they could perceive and in fact every one of us as well could the security system had actually nearly collapsed in the country and that's not um, a very good development for anybody or people in leadership so um, it's it's right now not lawful because security is uh, security social security within the country is actually the responsibility of the Nigerian police and then the uh, civil defense and then if it has to involve in territorial uh, safety, then the army and the uh, navy and the air force. But here, with all of that in place in Nigeria, there's so much kidnapping, banditry, uh, murder, mayhem and all of that. And some young people are saying, look, let's get down to this business of security. It's not their business, but they've made it their business. So, so we you, have you, to find you, you're, you're leaning towards supporting this behavior because of the security challenge we yeah. have. So what would be your reaction to this statement? Hold on. I'll come to you, Ada. It says, um, if the state, the spokesman for the coalition says, I'll quote, if the state governments and other leaders of the region fail to take action to protect the region the way their southern counterparts are doing, CNG is willing to follow through with all the processes of obtaining the required legal backing for the outfit from the relevant federal authorities. Back to the question, yeah. can they? Yes, sure they can. They can, just like any other security outfit gets licensing from civil defense and every other due authorities. They sure can. It's just that they, of course, in the process of getting authorization, a lot of screening now will take place and uh, it, it, there's a need to ensure, whether it's in the west, in the east or in the north, to ensure that all of these don't end up being a security challenge by themselves. You know, because they are trying to solve an immediate challenge and I've always contended that when all of that is solved, what's the future of all of these uh, outfits? So it's important that as much as they are relevant and, 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 and we need them uh, to act as checks, because recently with this Motecu, the reality is that we don't hear so much of all of this again in the West. So that means... It's, it's, still, it's still early days yet. So <laughs> let me bring Ada into the conversation. Um, Amoteku is still controversial at yes. the moment. The AGF has said is, it's not constitutional. They need to get the right back in. So far, we've not had an update on what the situation is with Amoteku. Considering the controversy surrounding the Southwest, which has triggered this reaction from the North, do you see them succeeding with this um, Shege Kapasa? I mean, I, I, I stand for every region trying to protect their people because there's a lot of issues with security in the country, like he's pointed out. My only 
fear is when these groups are not controlled, there will be more insecurity in the country. So it's not just about the due process of meeting the statesmen in their various regions. It's about if we're here, if our mission is to fight insecurity, what's the best way to achieve it and what's the best way to control this group and make sure that they focus on that goal. Because we've seen situations where these things start out this way. And I mean, look at the case of Bakasi in the East years ago. We see this situation, so th that's my fear. Are we sitting down and saying that our security agencies like the police, the army, are not as functional? Because, I mean, tomorrow we might sit down and the Eastern people will come up with theirs. So what are we saying exactly? So, so your, your, these outfits are out. If they were to, for instance, get a better um, organization structure, you know that there are checks and balances. Yes. Would you be more comfortable with having these? Because people are saying it's going to become a regional thing. I will be more comfortable if there are checks and balances. Everybody wants to, everybody needs to protect their people. We can't talk about the number of lives lost. It's, it's, it's every single day is the same story over and over. If this is going to work out for each region, fine. But you see, I still have, I always still have that fear of when these things escalate, because they will, if we don't manage them properly. We are sitting down now, we're seeing the Northern leaders, this group is saying this, this group is saying that, this group, what's the end factor? Even, the, even for the, from the West, it took a while and it's still currently on. So it's, I, 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 don't you think this is the moment to address the, the service chiefs? <laughs> that one is another long conversation for another day. But, um, uh, Barista, um, we know that the meaning, the literal meaning of the <laughs> word is, I dare you. And people are saying they are basically daring the other regions because of um, the South uh, West uh, Amoteku uh, movement. Is this a good thing for us? Because she alluded to the fact that there's every likelihood that every region will come up and say that they want uh, their own uh, security outfit. Yeah, definitely. I started by saying that this is reactive, that this other one coming from the North is reacting to the one coming from the West. My take uh, also, um, taking counsel from Ada's position is, I really want the government to take this as a challenge, to rejig whatever needs to be rejigged, get the police in control. Look, the police in all over the world, they are manning security and putting things in order. If you have to have sub-security systems, they have to report to the police. And it has to be such that the people have to be confident in all of that. I don't see how security in Nigeria should overwhelm our security outfits. Because all of this coming up is just saying we don't feel... We, we what what not... actions will the government, the federal government, take now, in your opinion, that can neutralize the need for these um, local or regional outfits? Look, if I'm the president of this country, I'll fire the IGP, fire the entire service chiefs, and keep firing down the line until we get the right man. When that happens, everybody will be confident of the security system. When you see, when you see safety, look, right now, to travel by road in this country is a challenge. And it's affecting commerce. Look, I, I, you just, so if you ask me what action will be taken, it's a simple thing, somebody that is not performing, you have a whole large command and funds and power and authority, and we are not getting results. You get the person out of the way. It's very simple. And so that people can be confident and then you get the right person. Are you telling me there are no right people that can actually man this uh, um, security outfit and give us results. That's my position with due right. respect. Uh, uh, <laughs> I guess me. you've made that quite clear. <laughs> but let me take your final thoughts before we go. These groups um, were the same ones sometime in 2017 that asked uh, the Igbos in the north to leave that place um, um, in the next three months. And of course, we got reaction all over uh, the country. People condemning that call, saying Nigeria is one. Now they are back again. That matter has died off. 
We are here. Do you think that we should take these people seriously? We should. I mean, the name, or, the name translating it to English is already scary. I dare you. What exactly are you doing? They're not just daring the other regions. They're daring everybody in the country, security, everybody. Because they're trying to say, we've given you the chance. You haven't done that. We've lost our family members. Well, the governors give the backing because what they did was unveil a logo. The governors have not come behind the way we have Amoteku. Do you see that happening? Let's wait and see. Well, I don't, I mean, at this point, it's, we're just, I, I, I have a feeling that um, in, the, in the next few days, we're going to hear more from them. It's still a developing story. We're going to hear more from them and we'll hear what other people, um, other regions have to say because, believe me, people are going to have a lot of reactions. Yeah. I guess we'll wait and see, like you said. Thank you again to the both of you for coming on Thank the program. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for staying with us thus far. We'll take our plots report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Don't go away. The House of Representatives is apparently worried over the visible international dimension to Nigeria's current security travels. The chairman of the House Committee on Defense, Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson, after a brief session with the nation service chiefs, said a more holistic approach is needed to address the nation's insecurity challenges. Actually, another one of those meetings, engagements, which we say is going to be continuous. We said it the last time. It's going to be continuous to, to, to find out exactly, open up, find out exactly what is going on, what the issues are, what the problems are, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, get some commitments from you. Uh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure moving forward, Moving forward, things are going to get better. We know what the basic issues are. There's funding, there's equipment, there's recruitment of uh, personnel. Uh, but I'm sure there are other things that would not be said, you know, in uh, full view of the cameras. It's major in our legislative agenda, and we must address it frontally, squarely, and however and whatever needs to be done. We must think outside the box. We must take the battle to these criminals. Uh, military issues are not uh, things we should be discussing uh, in public, but they raised a lot of issues that we must all sit down as Nigerians to discuss. One of it I can mention is there's probably an international dimension to what we see. There's ISIS, there's ISWAP. So those are things that we need to discuss in a very, very classified manner. Sacking service chiefs is not, we can suggest, but it is a function of the uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The box stops at its table. The deregistration of political parties by INEC is a welcome development, and I, for one, support a further reduction as I think it's still too much. I agree with those who say that the country can do without the huge cost implication of the large number of political parties. It will also, in my opinion, be one further step towards making politics less of an all-comer affair, opportunist affair, that is currently as we see it. The cliche phrase that one step at a time comes to mind with me thinking we just might get it right if we put in the effort. And that's my take tonight. But before I go, please be reminded to follow us on our social media pages and share your thoughts on all our programming. Also, don't forget to find time this weekend for self-care, no matter your schedule. Bye for now.